Good evening, YouTubers, and welcome to my 16th TTM video, where today I will show you a purchase that I got from one of the Facebook uh, groups that I'm in, and also some TTMs I got in the mail today, and one dreaded return. Yes, a failure. Let's start off with the failure. This took about seven days. It came from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I sent three cards to this gentleman. I sent this one, 1980 Olympic hockey team. And I sent his card. And let me just get them all in there. Okay. And I sent this one. And they're all from Mr. Dave Christian. Mr. Christian uh, sent them back in the envelope. Didn't sign the cards. Sent back the index card and everything, all three. So, it is a failure. I saw on Sports Card, uh, Sports Collectors Net that he did that also once before, but it already sent them out. So, tough one to take. I don't like getting failures, but it's part of the show. Uh, the only thing I would say is I wish he just sent it refused and sent it back so I could have kept the uh, envelope. Now, on to a purchase I made on a Facebook uh, group that I'm part of. This uh, is a Hall of Fame postcard, and I got it at a really good price. Extremely good. And this is Mr. Carlton Fisk, one and only Pudge, as he's known to many. Carlton Ernest Fisk he was born in 1947 on December 26. He's 72, born up in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Grew up in New Hampshire, said he was born in Vermont because that was the closest hospital to where he lived. He was called Pudge because he was a, uh, as a child, he was chubby. Played baseball and basketball in high school and got a basketball scholarship from the University of New Hampshire. Started for the University of New Hampshire Wildcats and also played baseball at the school. He was selected by the Boston Red Sox, the fourth overall pick in the 1967 draft, and decided not to focus uh, on a career in professional basketball. He said, I could never be a six foot two power forward and play for the Celtics. Now, Carlton Fisk was first called up by the Red Sox in 1969, where he played a couple of games, and then was called up again in 1971, where he played a couple more games. But it wasn't until 1972, that was his official rookie year, that uh, he played from then on. He was played for the Red Sox from 1971, to 1980, and during his contract negotiations with Haywood Sullivan, the general manager, uh, he wanted a little more money, and Haywood Sullivan mailed his contract one day after the deadline, so that made him a free agent, and he signed with the Chicago White Sox. also happened to Fred Lynn, who wound up signing with the California Angels. They lost two great players there. Fisk actually played longer for the, uh, the White Sox than he with the Red Sox. He played from 1981 to 1993, and with the White Sox, the old South Siders. He wore number 27 in Boston and then flipped it in Chicago, wearing number 72. He had 269 for his career, 376 homers, 1,330 RBIs, 2,356 hits. He was, uh, as I said, the 1972 American League Rookie of the Year, was 11 times an All-Star, and only once, actually, did he win a gold glove. That was 1973. His most famous moment probably came Game 6, the 1975 World Series. It was the bottom of the 12th. Pat Darcy was pitching, and he hit a home run to win the game right off the foul pole. And, of course, the famous shot of him, you know, waving the ball to stay fair, stay fair. And the NBC cameraman was so focused on him because there was a rat right where he was, and he was more focused looking at the rat than trying to move the camera around following the ball. So, that became the famous homer there. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2000, and is also a member of the Red Sox Hall of Fame. I believe he actually made them take down the plaque he had for the Red Sox Hall of Fame because it said he was born in Vermont. He wanted everyone to know he grew up in New Hampshire. In after the 1985 season, he was actually almost traded to the New York Yankees for Don Baylor, but the Yankees and the White Sox couldn't work out an agreement, so the deal fell through, and he stayed with the uh, the Sox. Although his baseball hat for the uh, Hall of Fame is with the Boston Red Sox, but uh, still a great pickup. It was a great price. 
much cheaper than I would have gotten on eBay and cheaper than I would have writing him and paying. So Carlton Fisk, part of my Hall of Fame postcard collection now. I'm trying to get as many as I can. I know I can't get all of them, but I'll get as many as I can. The first one I got today came from Phoenix, Arizona. It was 12 days. There is no fee on this one. Get it out of the envelope here. Didn't sign the index card, but that's okay. He signed the two cards I sent, a 1975 Tops and a 1976 Tops, two of my more favorite uh, years. And that's Mr. Bill Melton. William Edwin Bill Melton, known as Belton Bill, born in 1945. He's 75, born in Gulfport, Mississippi. Signed as a minor leaguer right out of high school in 1964 by the White Sox. He's played for the Sox from 1968 to 75, then played for the Angels in 76 and finished his career in 1977. His best season was in 1971. He was an all-star, and he led the American League in home runs. He was the first White Sox, actually, ever to lead the American League in home runs. He hit 33. But after that season, he injured his back in 1972, herniated two discs after trying to break his son's fall from their garage roof. And his career was never the same. He never hit more than 21 homers with those back problems. He was also a pretty poor fielder. And Harry Carey, who used to do the uh, White Sox games, used to really get on him about his uh, fielding. He had 253 in his career, hit 160 homers, 591 RBIs. Again, 12 days, no fee. He signed 71 AL All-Star in both of them, which is fine. I forgot what I actually asked him to write. So, nice gentleman there to sign both. Appreciated that. Another one came today, also from Phoenix. Arizona's the hot place right now. This is my basketball great. Solid player in his day. And that is two or two here from Mr. Leonard Truck Robinson, as he's known. Leonard Eugene Truck Robinson, born in 1951. He's 68, born in Jacksonville, Florida. Went to Tennessee State for college in 1974 in the NBA draft. Was second, picked in the second round, 22nd overall by the Washington Bullets. Played in Washington from 1974 to 77. And played in Atlanta and briefly in 77 and wound up going to the New Orleans Jazz, where he played from 1977 to 79. Went to Phoenix for three years and finished up with the Knicks, playing from 1982 to 1985. He was a two-time All-Star, made the All-NBA first team in 1978, led the NBA in rebounding that year as well. Had 11,988 points in his career, which is about 15.5 a game. Had 7,267 rebounds, about 9.4 a game. And 1,348 assists, about 1.7 a game. And again, eight days, no fee. Mr. Leonard Chuck Robinson signed both cards. This one with the bullets, the big one. I like those big cards. And this one with the Phoenix Suns. Good return there. Good TTMer. Next one came all the way from Louisiana. And this took 10 days. There was no fee for... This NFL Hall of Famer, Mr. Johnny Robinson, sent in the old 8x10. Get the glare off there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Johnny Nolan Robinson, born in September 1938. He's 81, born in Delhi, Louisiana. Was an all-state uh, football player, tennis player, and baseball player in high school. His father, Dub, was the uh, LSU tennis coach for a long time. And Johnny played college football at LSU. He was a member of the 1958 National Championship team. While in college, though, he was a great tennis player. Won the SEC Tennis Championship and also won the uh, SEC Doubles Championship with his older brother, Tommy. In 1960, he was selected in the NFL Draft. First round, third pick with the Detroit Lions. And was selected in the AFL Draft in the first round by the Dallas Texans, who later became the Kansas City Chiefs. Decided to go with the AFL, played with the Dallas Texans slash Kansas City Chiefs from 1960 to 71. His whole career was a three-time AFL champion, six-time AFL All-Star, led the AFL in interceptions back in 1966, was voted to the AFL All-Time Team. 
In the NFL, he played in, or AFL-NFL, he played in two Super Bowls. Super Bowl number one, which the uh, Chiefs lost to the Green Bay Packers, and then in Super Bowl four, where the Chiefs upset the Minnesota Vikings down in New Orleans. Made the 1970 Pro Bowl team and led the NFL in interceptions in 1971. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2019, was the ninth member of the Super Bowl four team to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He had 57 career interceptions, 741 yards, returning those interceptions, and had two defensive touchdowns. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2019, and he was kind enough to put that on there for me. Uh, after his playing days, he founded and operates a youth home down in Monroe, Louisiana. So I think the next time I write him for something, I'll probably include a donation for that. He was kind enough again to sign this for free. And Johnny Robinson, good man there. And also, this one came from Nashville, Tennessee today. I do know something about NASCAR here and there, and this is a NASCAR great. This is Mr. Let's set it up right. Mr. Daryl Waltrip. Signed two cards. Didn't sign the index cards, but I can get over that. That's fine. That's always a bonus for me. Born in 1947, Daryl Lee Waltrip, 73, born in Owensboro, Kentucky. It was in 809 races over 29 years. His first race was the 1972 Winston 500 in Talladega. His last race, to two, last race was the 2000 uh, Napa 500 in Atlanta. It was in 2000, I should say. He had 84 wins, 390 top tens, and 59 poles. His first win came in 1975 at the Music City USA, 420 in Nashville, and his last one was in 1992. Southern 500 in Darlington. This was seven days. It was no fee. And he signed both the cards. Very nice. This one here, number 18 of 66, like that. And then I wanted to get him to sign one with the uh, car on it, not just his picture. And that was 1992 Mountain Dew Southern 500 there. Last race he won. And the final one came in the mail. To, well, not the final one, I should say. The final picture I got, or a card, came from Las Vegas, Nevada. It took eight days. This was a photo. This is a former Major League pitcher, Mr. Gary Nolan of the Cincinnati Reds there. This was eight days. I did include five dollars because it's a picture. I usually like to try to include something. Gary Lynn Nolan, born in 1948. He's 72, born in Herlong, California. He was drafted by the Reds in the first round of the 1966 draft. Played in the Major Leagues from 1967 to 77. Made his Major League debut in 1967 on April 15th against the Houston Astros. His first start was a 7-3 victory. 18 years old, very young. N next start after that, June 7th, 1967. And he struck out Willie Mays four times in that game. He had 15 strikeouts in the game after giving up a three-run homer to Willie McCovey to tie the game, which the Giants eventually won 4-3. He was 14-8 and eight in his rookie year, was a hard thrower, fireballer, had a good arm. But in his career, he had numerous arm troubles, and that pretty much ended his career. Uh, he played in Cincinnati from 1967 to 77 and finished up with the California Angels in 1977. He was an all-star in 1972, won two World Series, 1975 and 76 as part of the Big Red Machine. He had 110 wins in his career, 3.08 ERA, struck out 1,039 batters, was a member of the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. After his career, he worked 25 years in Las Vegas. Thus, I guess that's where I sent the picture to. First, he was a blackjack dealer at the Golden Nugget and then worked as an executive host for guests at the Mirage, amongst other hotels. And again, this was eight days, $5. I asked him to put 1975, 76 world champs, and he kindly did there on the picture. I like this picture because it shows his back and his number, so I had other pictures on eBay that I could have bought that showed his face, but I like the back with the number. And the last um, item I got in the mail is a great one. At least I think it is. Because this came all the way from Indiana, took six days. It is a baseball. And I 
put a $20 fee in there for Mr. Carl Erskine, and he did a bang-up job. I asked him to put a couple of inscriptions that he thought might look appropriate in the ball. He put his name, his number, the years he pitched there. He put on the bottom, 1953 liter. Uh, stats all over the ball. No hitter there, no hit club. He even put on the side there, you know, the 1953 World Series, the World Championships he was on. Also, beautiful ball. True gentleman. TTM Hall of Famer, Mount Rushmore TTMs, Carl Daniel Erskine, born in 1926 in December. He's 93, maybe 94 this year, born in Anderson, Indiana. Played in uh, the Major Leagues from 1948 to 1959, just like he said on the ball there. <clears throat> was an All-Star in 1954, threw two no-hitters against the Chicago Cubs in June 1952, and then the New York Giants in May of 1956. Played in Two world championship teams, 1955 with the Brooklyn Dodgers, the Boys of Summer, and 1959. Pitched in 11 World Series games, had 14 strikeouts in Game 3 of the 1953 World Series that stood for 10 years until Sandy Koufax broke it in 1963 when he struck out 15 Yankees in Game 1 of that World Series. After his playing days, he coached at Anderson College for 12 seasons, won four Hoosier Conference Championships. And this was six days. It was $20 I contributed, and well worth it, because you ain't going to get this kind of ball on eBay for 20 bucks. I can tell you that. It's definitely worth the contribution. Probably the last time I'll write the gentleman. I've written him before, gotten a card and everything, so I don't want to bother him too much. All right, folks. That is it for today. Now, the next video... I will uh, tell everyone about the prizes for the 200th subscriber contest. I want to thank everybody for um, getting me to 200, all the subscribers and everything. That is great. Thank you all out there. I want to thank everybody for watching and leaving comments. Please do. Always, I like the comments. And if I can help, you need any addresses or anything, please don't hesitate to ask. I can certainly try to give you what I got, if I got it. I'll give it to you. I want everyone to take care. Always remember, use blue tape when sending out cards. That's always the thing I like to say. And I want to say good night to Connecticut. Take care, everyone, and be safe.